Galaxy Fighter. This lesson is called The Score and the Levels. Here we have our ship. When the ship shoots down a meteor, it scores 3 points. If it shoots down an alien, it scores 5 points. If it touches a depot, it scores 2 points. These points are added to the total score. And when that score reaches the goal score, we are ready for the next level. We will represent the current level by a number inside a purple ring. We will represent the score by a purple eye that fills the purple ring. When the eye has filled the whole ring, we know that we have reached the goal score and the level is about to be incremented by 1. How do we make this happen in our code? We will have a score manager that will have two instance variables, the score and the level. It will represent the level by a number and the score by an opening eye. What events change the score and thereby the level? Here are three events that change the score. When the ship touches the depot, when the laser hits meteor, and when the laser hits alien. And who knows about these events? Collision Manager does. So each time one of these events happen, the Collision Manager will send an increment score by value message to the Score Manager. And the Score Manager will update its score and, if needed, the level. And also the visual representation. The level here might be used to manipulate the behavior of the game. The higher the level, the more difficult we want our game to be. As we know from previous lessons, the flyers like meteors, depots and aliens are controlled by two variables. The next delta time controls how frequently the flyers are spawned and the fly duration controls the speed of the flyer across the screen. We want to make those values depend on the level. As the level increases, the flyer's spawn frequency can be increased and the speed of the flyers can also be increased. So, we want the level to control these parameters. Which of the parameters should we control? That is a design decision. In our game, we will let the level change the spawn frequency of the meteors and the speed of the aliens. At this point, we will not change the rest of parameters, although we might change our mind in the future. Now, what exact relation should we make between the level and the next delta time here and the fly duration here? We will use linear relation. The linear relation is by far the most commonly used relation, not only in games, but in all of science. So it's worth to take some time to understand it. Here is a coordinate system. We have our y-axis vertically and our x-axis horizontally. And we have a line. What is the equation of that line? As you know from school, it is y equals m times x plus b, where b and m are two constants. What do these two constants represent in our graph? b is the y value corresponding to x equals 0. So b is the value where the line intersects the y axis. In our case here, b is 3. 1, 2, 3. And m is the value that tells how much y changes when x changes by 1. 
In our case, when x increases by 1, y changes by minus 0 0.5. Hence, m equals minus 0 0.5 in our case. Let's look at our line again. Often, we don't want our values to be too low or too high. Instead, we want our function to be as follows. It has a maximum value, and a linear part, and a minimum value. To accomplish this, we use something called the clamp function. It takes any value y and makes sure it stays between the minimum value a and the maximum value b. Here is an example of how we might use the linear relation. We want to make our flight time depend on the level, in a linear manner. The level plays the role of x here, and the alien max flight time is the constant b. And the alien delta flight time is the slope constant m. As level varies here, so does our flying time. This line corresponds to this equation here. And this line here uses the clamp float function, which is a standard C function. And that corresponds to this equation here. So these two lines gives us the relation we want. Let's look at those two lines again. In our case, we will introduce a third line here. It takes the flight time and gives it some randomness. This constant, called alien flight time variation, might be 1.3. If we look through the code, we can identify four constants and we can define those constants in our common clause. We have a max flight time, mean flight time, delta flight time, and the flight time variation. And these constants determine the actual flight duration of the alien. Now we can do the same thing with the next delta time, which controls the spawning frequency. We can use the same approach, but with different constants. With these eight constants, we can control spawning frequency and the flight duration as we want. In our case for the alien, with the constants here, you see that there will be a level-dependent flight duration, but no level-dependent variation of the spawning frequency but if we change our mind, we can change that behavior, just by changing the constants. And what we have done for the alien, we can do for meteors and for depots, and any other flyer that we might introduce in the future. Let's go to Xcode and explore these ideas. We are inside Xcode. Our task is to make score increase when the laser hits the meteor or the alien, or when the ship touches the depot. When the score reaches a certain goal score, we want to go to the next level. We want to make it harder to play as the level increases. Our plan is to introduce a label for the level and a progress I for the score. We also want to make linear relation between the level, the next delta time, and also between the level and the flight duration. We have two new images called purpleI.png and purplering.png. We also have a new sound called newlevel.mp3. We have one new class, the score manager, which we will make a singleton, because its instance variables score and level will be used by lots of classes in our program. 
Seven clauses are affected. New constants are defined in the common clause. Code has to be added to two methods in the collision manager. Game layer has to set up the score manager. The fly manager has to accommodate for the linear relation between level and fly duration and also next delta time. Alien manager, depot manager and meteor manager have to change their fly duration and next delta time methods. A suggestion before looking through this lesson is to first look at my free tutorial called Singleton Secrets. Let's take a look at our starting point. Here is purplering.png and here is purpleeye.png. In the sounds we have a new level.mp3. Let's listen to it. What changes do we have in our common class? We are importing score manager so that all classes that import common.h will have access to it. We are defining a shorthand called sm for a call to the score manager singleton. Then we have some new constants. The first two constants are used for determining the goal score. We will use low values here when we develop the game, but we'll make them higher when we ship the final game. The next three constants tell us how much we score when we touch the depot or shoot a meteor or alien. The level position is used to determine where on screen to put the level and score indicators. I also want to point out the constants that we use for determining our spawning periods and flying times. Let's look at the game layer. In the init method, we are setting up the score manager by giving it a pointer to the game layer itself. The score manager needs that in order to give a visual representation of the level and the score. Let's look at the score manager, the interface part. We have five instance variables, the score and the level, and also the purple ring, purple eye, and level label. The score and level are set up as properties because we want the other classes to be able to access them. Since our score manager is a singleton, we have a shared class method. Setup SM method is used for giving game layer access to the score manager. The last four methods are used for manipulating the level and the score. Let's now look at the implementation. Since score manager is a singleton, we use the standard share method code. Let's go down to the setup score manager. It calls the setup level and setup score. The setup level sets up the purple ring and also the level label. The setup score adds the purple eye to the purple ring as a child. The reset score sets score to zero and calls the update score method. The update score method synchronizes the score and the level. It calculates the goal score and converts the score into percentage done. We use that value to scale the I. We also check if the percentage done is greater than 1, in which case we play the new level sound, call the ink level method, and reset the score to zero. The ink score by method increases the score by the value given and calls the update score method. The ink level method increments the level by one and sets the level label. 
The reset level method just sets the level and the corresponding label back to 1. Let's now go to the Collision Manager, the implementation part. Let's look in the ship hits something method. When the ship hits depot, we send an ink score by message with a certain value. In the laser hits object method, when the laser hits the alien or the meteor, we also send an ink score by message with appropriate values. Let's now go to the fly manager, the interface part. We are introducing two new methods, both having the level as parameter. Observe also the eight instance variables that we will use in these methods. Let's go to the implementation part. Take a look at the fly duration method. You see that we are establishing a linear relationship between the fly duration and the level. The next delta time method is built up in the same way. If we take a look at the Meteor Manager, the implementation part, in the setup constants method, we see that we are setting up the eight variables to appropriate values. From the fly duration method, we simply call the fly duration of the super class, passing the current level along. In the Alien Manager and Depot Manager, we do the exactly same thing, so no need to look there. That's everything there is to it, so let's run and test. See, it works. <laughs>